is a quick test. Test, test, test. Uh, let me know if my sound is too high or too low. And then also, as soon as I introduce CoCast, uh, just let me know if their sound is too high or too low as well. Thank you.
friends never die when the world is calling you can you hear them screaming out your name legends never die they become a part of you every time you play for reaching greatness relentless you survive I'll try to muffle it as much as I can. I am fantastic, ready to watch some oh. excellent league gameplay with you, my friend, my buddy. I did not unmute myself for the whole intro, so it's all good. But we do have a last minute sub of uh, Elemental Lexus going to be subbing in for Fletcher Budge, who is also a new player for the O Plays. Um, All right. Don't know what happened there, but uh, I don't. Is is that for sure? That is what I was just told by um, my wife, who's subbing on the team as well. So apparently, it is so. In my man. I don't. I'm not 100 percent sure though. So 
while he while he uh, goes to check and comes right back, uh, how are you guys doing tonight, Chant? How was the sound? Is uh, is either of yep. us too loud? Yep. yep, I saw I saw in the chat. Fluger blue is playing. Or Fluger, Fluger Bludge. Yeah. Flugger Bludge? Fluger it's I think it's Fluger Bludge. Should we say it with like a like a Norwegian accent? Like Fluger Bludge? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the official way to say it. Um hopefully there's somebody somebody that could maybe uh maybe give us a little insight. Um maybe they happen to be listening into the stream and they're on his team or I mean, can ask him for Maybe the time being like, i think i think i'm just gonna go with fluger bluge as a I, with a norwegian I accent until i, I get corrected fluger, uh, <laughs> i think i'm gonna go with, i'm gonna go with fluger just fluger for short and uh that's what we'll go with today for me at least uh I'm we got all the way with norwegian sorry we get <laughs> <laughs> good we got GNP and Yo plays today. I'm trying to pull up some of the stats on these teams. I'm looking. Don't know. Is... Are you yeah. online for league at the moment? I, I, I've tried twice and it says both times it says there's an unexpected error with the login session. Please try again. So I'm just gonna uh, keep yeah. giving it. Keep giving them, giving it the old college try till I can, till I can get in on this one. It was doing that to me yesterday, I think it was. I had to like try and sign in like four times just to get in. Yeah, I'm giving it my best effort. Uh, we'll see what happens. League's client is the best. Super <laughs> well-programmed. I've never had any issues. Uh, while I get this set up, I am pulling up the records. It seems like the Yo plays are 3-7 and seven and GNP is 2-8. and eight. But GNP does have that all-important win against the NA Rams. <laughs> they certainly do. Um, <laughs> they do have two subs, though. So they have a different uh, possible mid laner, I would assume, with MNX subbing in. And a possible different top laner, I would also assume, with Quinstone subbing in. So we'll see. I mean, maybe those uh, those roles aren't finalized, but... I'm interested to see where they do send the subs and everything. So, yeah, I'm I'm uh I'm in a grants there. I think you're probably gonna see something similar to what you're thinking on GMP's side. On the Yo Plays side, I don't know what we're gonna get. Uh, you know, there's no real tried and true jungler. You know, I'm um, if I were a betting like, man. I would guess that Mr. Sweet Smell of Suck is going to go jungle or Elemental Lux. I think Ele Elemental Lux is not playing. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. I should correct that, actually. I don't I, know which, what Fledger Bludge plays. I, I don't know Fledger what he plays Bleach. either. I'm, I'm guessing Fluger is their jungler. Uh, I'm, that's my guess. Um... Uh, I believe, yeah, there we go. Bang. I think you're going to see, and then my guess is obviously it's going to be Cyanamore with Area 95 as a sub. Uh, the support, and then Fluger Bludge will be in the jungle. Um, yeah, I, I believe we're so. about to get it right into draft here. Yep. I am going to go ahead and swamp over, but uh, I, would, uh, I would agree that that is probably the... Uh, <clears throat> the consensus for the Oblaze is that's how the lanes should go. Considering Ben JJ got replaced by Mr. Fluger Bluch. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are, you, what, are you, what are you looking for from both teams as far as bans here, you think? Like, what would you yeah, ban so if you're I'm on looking these teams? At the, uh, I'm looking at the side of GMP who is uh, Quinston in the top lane. Uh, I mean, he's had some good performances on Shen and Wukong. Uh, I think those are two champions you could potentially look at. Um, the Misfortune ban, I think, is a great ban against the Yo plays. Uh, one of Zyanamore's most played champions and is extremely strong in the meta right now, uh, if anybody 
you know, to those paying attention to the, the world's action, Misfortune is one of the top three ADCs being played pretty much every game. Um, so I like that ban there. The Fizz ban away from Eminic, a classic every time ban. You have to get rid of it. It's just the tax for playing against Eminic. They're hovering Nasus at the moment. I would assume that's going away from uh, the sweet smell. Sweet of sock. smell. Yeah, he is. He is pretty good on the Nasus. I would have to say. Uh, yeah, that's an, it's just a pick you don't want to see in the enemy side. You just don't want that thirty-minute insurance plan just ticking away, stacking away at the enemy side. And with the changes to Grasp and the changes to Nasus's early game. He's not nearly as difficult to play in the early game as he used to be. Um, so really get into that late game, all powerful doge standpoint. Really not as hard as it used to be. Yeah. Mordekaiser being banned away from uh, Queenstone. That is a uh, very good champ in the uh, team fights for singling out a certain person to kind of exclude them for the team fight. And Vex being hovered by GMP right now. Vex is, I think this... This is not is the first allowed? game. This is not the it, first she game is, she's been allowed, though. This is the first week, yes. I think. This yeah, is the first the week. week but, six. Yeah, I don't think it's the first game, but, um, but Mr. Yogurt on game. Floor has been playing a lot of This is the first game that features, features Yogurt on Floor, yes. Yeah, and that exactly. man has been putting in some work on that champion. We've seen it in, uh, I guess we'll call them our scrims, you know, when we all, when we all play together, we've seen <laughs> him do it. And, uh, could be deadly. The Shen also being taken away from the top lane. Getting that out of here. We don't want that full map presence. I mean, who wants a uh, teammate that can R to bot lane and then also T TP right back to the top lane to catch all the CS that they missed? Hey, what? <laughs> top lane being useful? Never. Is that early? Soraka pickup? I would assume that is for Mrs. So HXC. That is a pretty signature champ for her. That is also first pick, surprisingly, for both of these teams. So we'll see what the Yoplays have to answer with. I'd like to see potentially the Leona out of the side of the Yoplays. Um, maybe get a little aggressive. Uh, Yo, uh, maybe Jin Leona might be strong. The Lux is okay here, I think, as well. Uh, you know, it's tough to poke down a Soraka. S sustain beats poke. But, you know, definitely going to be doing a lot of damage in, towards the second half of the game. Um, and could make plays in the first half. So see what they can do. Yeah, I mean, they might just be looking for a little more uh, range late. lockdown. Yeah, uh, late as they pick power. up Ash as well. Like, uh, the, like once you hit six, Ash can R, Lux can Q, and then R herself. Or not R herself, but R the person that they lock down, and uh, that person doesn't get the move for a good, you know, four or five seconds almost. <laughs> yeah, that one shot potential is definitely there, and holding them still, letting the ash wail on them. You could definitely do that. Uh, so we'll see what they're able to take advantage of, especially the new Hail of Blades ash that everybody's starting to like, um, as opposed to lethal tempo. You get a lot more early game prowess. Yon being picked up for GMP. That is a pretty standard or classic, I guess. Eminent champ as he is subbing in for their team. They're hovering Nocturne and they actually do log it in. I don't know if I've ever seen Dorsky play this. Dorsky? Is he not the jungler for GMP? It might no, be a Hiri. Oh, no, no. Dorsky is usually a top lane. He, Quinstone subbing in for Dorsky. Okay, a Heary. But uh, even then, I don't think I've ever seen a Heary play it either. So I'm curious what the answer is for your place. The Juani coming oh. out. Best girl. Best girl. Best girl. This says Juani in the jungle. Not All as right. good as getting to the lanes for those ganks as Nocturne, but uh, the... Um, Amount of CC you can provide with Sejuani is pretty nutty, the to pre, be honest. The pre-6 from Sejuani is going to be tough, too. Sejuani pre-6 is pretty strong, uh, even against Nocturne, you know. Going to be, uh, especially with a Yon. Oh, excuse me. Never mind. I'm thinking... Woo! 
My apologies. I'm thinking uh, Sejuani and Sejuani and Nocturne are opposite sides. I'm thinking Sejuani as the end. The uh, Aurelian Soul Ban is a no ban. Um, yeah, they lost a yeah, ban. They so lost a ban for the just, late sub. Yeah. yeah. They're not. Nobody's playing Aurelian Soul. I don't think we have anybody. Any, uh, we any, did? Uh, we did have an Aurelian Soul in a normal game last night that went jungle, so. <laughs> Might be some uh, new. It might be some new meta. New technology. <laughs> As a Nico and Wukong getting banned away from GMP, that's a Snack the Dipper and a Quinstone special, respectively. So we'll see yeah, what I, the actual ban is for GMP. I here. really like the Nico ban out of the Yo plays. Uh, the AD mid laner already being picked out of the side of GNP. The AP coming from the bot side would really be something they would like to look towards. Um, they could still take AP in the top side. The Gwen is still strong, and a member of GNP has been known to, to pull the little uh, pull the seamstress out. Um, yeah. So we'll see what they do there. And uh, surprisingly enough, nobody banned or picked Cinder in the first round. I've noticed that's kind of a big trend versus the Yo plays is to just take away Yoga on floor Cinder because he is pretty proficient with that champ, I would say. But these uh. Since that's Bandy opts for the Ari here, and it's looking like they're going for maybe a Zig Soraka bot lane. Yeah, I really like it. I like it a lot, actually. The uh, mages in the bot lane are really strong, and uh, Yogurt on floor. I'm sorry, not Yogurt on floor. Who am I thinking of? Snack the Dipper. Uh, Snack the Dipper being, uh, you know, I, I think a better mage player than a marksman player. Um, I, I really like this pick. We've seen him shine on the Nico in the bot lane with uh, with So HXC, who I will for for the rest of this stream refer to as Socks. Oh yeah, um, it's easier that way. Socks in the bot lane <laughs> with uh, Mage, the caster APC. I really like that a lot. I like the adaptation. I like that they're going with Ziggs because Nico's banned. Ziggs being a super strong champion right now in the bot lane. So really like where they headed up. They're that hovering a blind pick. Darius right now for the top lane uh, for Mr. Quinstone. It's kind of bold. It's a little but, uh, aggressive. It's a little bold. Uh, there is a lot you can do against Darius. He's very easy to counterpick. Um, yeah, oh, TK. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's an excellent selection. The Elite Warrior coming to play. Uh, not super lovely for Darius. It's hard to uh, hard to kill uh hard to kill that tk for sure that fish is TK. huge huge in the top lane uh darius did just get a buff on his w i believe it was the yeah, cooldown w, is uh, standardized uh, over all levels now yeah w cooldown goes to five seconds at all levels it's a decent buff um i don't know if it really pushes him farther up into on the tier list too much but you know it's it's decent uh, Mr. Tyler Jordan asks, what is Elite Warrior from? What is Elite Warrior from? It's, it's Elite Warrior! Tom Kench! <laughs> I see, we see some some banter avatar selections. We got the potions coming out of the Yo plays. And uh, it's looking like we're going to get the flowers. Maybe, or the saplings. The Except for socks. <laughs> Except for Sox, she's rocking a cupcake. I mean, Sox we'll is a cupcake till she dies kind of person, I think, to be honest. As a, I think we should. There's no reason not to hop straight into the actual draft, but uh, looking at team comps, uh, what, are, what are your thoughts on these two teams at the moment? I, it's tough because I like both teams a lot. Um, yeah, but taking the taking away is, taking away the people playing the actual champs. What do you think of the comps? I should say. Yeah. Um, a little more specific. The yo plays are really hard to get in on. Uh, it's hard to move past that Sichuani that Tom can get onto that Ash. That Lux has a lot of CC. Ari's jumpy. Um, it's gonna be really difficult for this team to get on, even with Nocturne uh, and Yon. I believe that this may be the Yo Plays game to lose. Uh, that being said, 
if there's any indecision, GNP is going to win up this poke war with just with Ziggs. And then they're going to be able to threaten the all-in dive at any time with Yona Nocturne. So it, it's, it's going to be tough. The early game is going to be very telling. If these lanes can get ahead of the side of the GNP, um, then they might be okay. But it is going to be tough sledding early on. It's going to be... Uh, the ball is going to be in Yo Play's court for pretty much the entire game, I think. Yeah, I mean, I was kind of thinking the same thing. Like the Yo Play's have a very good like team fighting comp for the most part. They can kind of get picks with the Sejuani R, Ash R, and Ari like R Charm or something like that. But um, that being said, I think GNP has a really good counter engaged team with the Nocturne and the Yone, especially being able to. Deny all the vision of the enemy team, and then just Young can R as many people as he wants. Um, Soraka will be there to heal anybody. And there's not really anybody that can dive onto that Soraka Ziggs in the back line on the far side of Yo plays except kind of Ari, but Ari's not really known for getting onto someone and just killing them on the back side of the team fight. Yeah, I think it's going to be whoever makes the second move wins. Uh... Whoever pulls the trigger, whoever gets antsy and shoots first is probably going to lose the fight unless it's a it's a wide open pick like a Sichuani all onto, you know, somebody that's separated yeah. or squishy target like Soraka gets blown up or some, something of that nature. It's going to be if nobody missteps, it's going to be whoever pulls pulls the trigger second, I think. Yeah, I mean, for the and for the side of your place, if they were to happen to go first um, in that whole, like, whoever goes second wins, I think they kind of really need to lock down either the Soraka or the Ziggs. Yeah, it's definitely going to take good coordination out of their side. Uh, they have so much to layer. You know, this is Wani Alt, Ash Ultimate, Lux is just blowing up that area. Um, they have already Charm. <laughs> Tom Kench yeah, is a uh, right. new E, I guess it is, I think. Tom is e Kench is the changed? Tom No, the W is uh Oh Tom yeah. Kench. The Abyssal Voyage. Yeah. Is Tom yeah, W. Okay. Um Yeah, that's uh that's the one pick that doesn't super fit the comp in my mind. The Tom uh, Kench? But yeah, but um you know, for the lane it's going to be valuable. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna help get the Sejuani ahead if the Sejuani decides to try and dogpile that top lane. Uh, I mean, they might be thinking, uh, don't lose lane as a semi tank, and then just be a beefy just frontliner. Be useful, yeah. yeah. Later I on just, in the game. Uh, I don't know. I mean, TK is not gonna get poked down by Ziggs. He's just gonna heal it all back pretty much. I don't know. I don't know. TK is always good. Yeah. <laughs> After the changes, uh, he's just he's just good in the top lane. <clears throat> he was good before, but he kind of lost the whole ability with the whole uh, just eat on his uh, W. But now that it's his ultimate, and it does more, I believe it does more damage, correct? If he eats uh, an uh, enemy team member? Yes, yeah, his devour yeah. is stronger than it used to be, albeit it's his ultimate at this point. So, yeah, so uh, definitely buffed him for solo lane compared to support. So, uh, we've been seeing him a lot more in top lane after that uh, semi rework or half rework, I guess. Uh, Mr. Elemental Lux, who was supposed to be subbing, says he actually likes the Tom Kench for the comp because it's extra safety for the Ash. If they do get caught, they can get uh, devoured and uh, have a little bit of a extra chance for the team fight. What are your, your thoughts on that? Uh, maybe. Uh, if they get onto the Ash, it's because they dove past the TK. Yeah, that's kind of what so, I was thinking. They got if they get past the Sejuani, like if they get past the CC and the two tanks, uh, they're kind of just already in there, right? Already like, in it, yeah. Unless they're doing enough damage, 
that eating the ash saves her for long enough. Like, I don't think the I don't think the Yon Nocturne Darius dies fast enough that ash won't pop back out and get popped. But that being said, they do have Soraka, so if ash is about to get popped, or I'm sorry, uh, it's wrong team. <laughs> but if the if they do get almost get popped on the other side uh, before the ash comes back out, Soraka can save them. I will return shortly. We're going to take a quick little break before we get into game one. Sounds great. I was thinking the same thing. I got to go take a leak. I'm going <laughs> to turn the music up a little bit. Uh, we're waiting 40 seconds, and then we're in the game, guys. All right. Alrighty, everybody, we are hopping into the game here. Game one of GNP versus the Yo Plays. As soon as, uh, we, there we go. All right, we are set. Let me make sure I have everything pulled up here. I don't usually stream, so hopefully I can get everything set up the way it needs to be. Weirdly enough, my the overlay is not high enough. Bang. Damn it. Okay. You're reading too much into it. Uh-huh. Bang. I think I am good now. As soon as my uh co-caster hops back in, we should be good to go. Let me just delete this. I believe it is control shift S. No. Watch this. Maybe uh, once my co-caster's back, he knows how to zoom out a little bit. I can't remember off the top of my head. But uh, game one, looking like a pretty standard defense here. There is nobody on the top side of mid lane here watching out for that Ari. Um, but otherwise, pretty standard. Nobody has any crazy, like, level 1 strats or level 1 uh, team fights out of both of these teams. One thing I do kind of want to note, though, is that Mr. Quinstone in the top lane for uh, not 1, 2, 3, 4, which I'm about to fix. Sorry about that. Oops. As soon as I alt-tab. Um, I am here. Uh, what time do you got? I am at 1.11, 1.12. Okay, I'm, did you hit the uh, plus button? I certainly did. Alright. I'm sitting at 121, 22, Yeah, thankful for the, for the no action early because... Uh, yeah, I mean, I was here, but I was also facing the stream as uh, I had the... Uh, what do you call them? Acronyms wrong. I still had them as the placeholders and did not change them. But I was pointing out that Mr. Quinstone here in the top lane for the Glaze, non-human primates, took Ghost and Teleport, no Flash, no Ignite, as the Darius. All right. I think there's a little bit of an interesting choice into a Tom Kench. As a uh, not much action starting off here early. Seems like both junglers kind of going for a full bot side clear at least into maybe a full stop side clear. Um, 
Nocturne definitely wants to get that level 6 in order to be useful on his ganks a little bit more because he can block all the vision. So. Yeah, we can see how far ahead uh, the Sejuani is in the clear. Um, jungle clear speed, not often something that people talk about, but it's something you can really, really take advantage of if you're just you know, a better clearer than your opponent. Uh, something you can really see, when you can see the whole map, you can really see the difference between you know, somebody that is clearing a little more optimally. You can see how the Sejuani's already on the red, already halfway dead, and Nocturne's not even on blue yet. Uh, just small things like that, especially from the jungle position, that really make a big difference. Yeah, I mean, that ends up into a little bit more pressure for your team, which ends up into a little bit more of a lead, figuratively, and uh, so on after that. But uh, seeing a lot of trades come in from a lot of lanes, top lane is seeming like a little bit of a, a slapstick fight, as Sejuani is already on the top scuttle. Misses the smite, actually, as I hear he does get the smite with the, uh, the Nocturne there, and Eminem trying to follow up a little bit, but... Uh, not much to do there. Not have smite. Uh, they are to use smite twice, so they just uh, unfortunately leashed it. All that, all that extra early game knowledge that I was talking about, unfortunately <laughs> leading to the crab for the enemy. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna go for that early crab, you kind of gotta have smite to uh, be able to secure it. But uh, maybe a, a mistake on the clear. He had to use Smite a little bit earlier to get some health, but is going to get the bottom, Scuttle, and he's actually invading onto the Nocturne side to get a oh, deep ward onto that red. We can already see the pings coming out by Area 95, letting us know the Cloud Jake, hey, it's up. It's up at 45. <laughs> Let's get a move on. We're trying to get a 21 minute Drake. I do not. Soul. I actually have chat um, on. What? I know. I probably chat. should. I should. I'll turn chat on. Yeah, gotta, gotta. gotta I think it auto turned off actually, but uh, I'm gonna I mean, kind of pressure in the Sejuani who's trying to steal away the uh, Raptor camp here, but. I mean, if Sejuani chooses to go, but Quinstone TPing in, pulling into the Sejuani, getting the W off, and the Q, getting first blood. That is a good TP. Ends up using both summoners there, but uh, does secure the first blood, which is a lot of gold, so. Yeah, strong start by <coughs> the uh, Glaze non human primates there. Really smart play by Eminic to not only spot out that Sejuani, but then apply pressure on them. And the Sejuani's thinking, listen, my Ari's right there. You're all alone, brother. You ain't got nothing on me, but uh, the TP definitely changes that up in favor of GNP. So first blood over the games. Yeah, I mean, the Sejuani only needed one more uh, auto for the E stack. Would have been a stun. Ari could have came in and charmed, and that could have been first blood going the other way. But uh, I don't know if it was... Teamwork or just good awareness coming out of Quimstone there to TP down and uh, punish that Sejuani for going a, for a little bit of a uh, greedy invade there. Maybe should have just taken the deep ward and left, but uh, ends up going 0 1 for it. So. Looking like they're trying to get vision around this uh, Dragon Pit. Uh, here he is. So, Miss Socks there to clear the, the pink ward. Got a little bit of a CS lead in the top lane, even with the TP play being made. That is that is just, you know, the nature of Darius. Being able to really bully that lane. Oh, oh no, R in from Eminic onto Yogurt on the floor, but gets exhausted, gets charmed, gets queued, but not enough damage to really do a kill on either side. As he E's forward again, looking for the Q3, but uh, barely misses. Yogurt on the floor gets the, another R proc to the side and dodges that out. Ultimate's traded, exhaust down for Yogurt, and uh, TP still on the side of Eminic.
Oh, Sejuani is just here for the gank. Gets the procs. Does not have the vision for the E, though. Uh, so he doesn't get the stun. But here he's on the backside of this. Get, procs the Q. Gets the, uh, almost gets the fear. Forces the flash out from Fludger. Fludger Bluge. And uh, he's going to retreat in his own jungle. And Yogurt, pretty low on HP at the moment. Yeah. Forced the flash away from the Q3 from Eminic. Good aggressive play by Eminic there, knowing that he's able to land that Q would certainly mean a kill, and if not, it's got to force that left flash, so. That's that knowledge of Yone coming in. We know he knows how to play the champ. It's the second most played, obviously, behind that Fizz, and his early pressure is definitely one of the leading factors in this Drake going down. Yeah, I mean, as uh, they are going to collapse onto this Drake, going to be able to take first Drake. On the side of uh, GNP. And Look at the jungler giving the 25 gold over to his APC. He knows where the gold needs to be. <laughs> uh, that being said, Mr. Flooch Blooch is answering on the top side with the, the Rift Herald at the moment. Don't know if anyone's going to be there to contest it. Uh, Miss Directed Camera is not showing that at all. At all. It's. Uh, Darius and Tom Catch are being big fight in there oh. in the top lane. Quinzo gets the heal and gets the kill off on the uh, Tom Catch there. I think the if solo he... kill going down to the Darius. I did, I as much as the directed camera may not have seen it, I was able to watch. It was neck and neck down to the last ability. The Darius Q making it happen. Any one any one more auto from the Tom Catch would have swayed it the other way, but. Not happening here. The Starius is 2 and 0, oh, exercising that strength in the top lane, the awareness of the TP, and he's actually going for the Sheen buy. Going is for this the Darius? Go for going for Triforce? Sheen, Sheen, Bramble Vest, and Merc Treads. What an interesting combo. I understand the Merc Treads. Uh, or the overall game i mean you're gonna definitely need it for the damage on the lux and yari um the slows from the c the sejuani the they're looking to turn here on eminic as they did r over the wall they're getting a lot of sejuani price but i don't know if they're getting enough to actually get the stuns off and uh at fluja blue ends up going down as well as you're gonna floor as they were a little bit caught out here but misfortune bot or sweet smell of the suck rather does tp in doesn't get a whole lot though but the uh, the bot lane does trade onto uh, Mr. Eminick as Snack the Dibber does go down as well with a good uh, Lux Q stopping him from taking that blast cone to safety. All in all, that's a that's a two for two trade. That's what we see. We see the uh, Lux and Ash potential right there in that fight. Really uh, holding down the team. Making them, uh, slowing them up, holding them down so that that Ash can really go to town on them. And that's going to be the Yo Play's bread and butter for this, for the entire rest of this game. We're really looking forward to uh, that Ash becoming online. As this Nocturne might look to say something about it. Yeah, I mean, Nocturne hovering the bottom lane here. But, uh, doesn't know where they went, doesn't have vision, so he can't R in. But, uh, like, yeah, like you said, the Yo Place does have a lot of CC, so, I mean, almost every single member has some form of CC, with some of them having multiple forms of CC, so, we'll, we'll see. So, back uh, to this Darius buy, um, <laughs> <laughs> I understand the Merc Treads for, you know, the entire game. The Bramble, I sort of get it, I... Uh, TK's healing doesn't really happen until after the fight. Uh, yes, he'll heal a little bit with Grasp and with his Q, but uh, is that enough to warrant Bramble? Uh, I, I would say probably not, but... And then the Sheen, I mean, I, I think he's just building into Triforce. Maybe it was all the gold he had. I mean, that is like a, the Darius build now, I think, right? Is the Triforce... But the uh, Bramble might be more of just like a, I want to be a little more defensive because Tom Kent does try to punish. As Eminic uses a alt, whips a big R in the bot lane, tries to go for maybe a dive there with the Nocturne being down there as well. But uh, expends the R for nothing. 
Ari is roaming down, but uh, a little too late at the moment. As uh, both the mid and jungle from the GNP goes back towards the mid side of well, the map. You'll see that the Ari won't lose anything in the mid lane for that. Uh, the roam just applying the pressure. She's going to be able to come back and catch pretty much this entire wave. Oh, big charm missed there as Eminek gets a big trade again onto the Ari. Does it expend the exhaust as well? So, uh, Ari getting dove right now by the Nocturne, jumping in onto the backside, gets charmed. Don't know if they're actually going to live here as we jump to top lane with Darius and the uh, Tom Kent's fighting. Huge R coming from Darius, but the shield is just a little bit too much from the Tom Kent. Misses the Q. And I believe that's it for the action as Xanamore actually throws down the R from the Ash onto this uh, Soraka. Going to be able to almost take her down. Flashes forward for the last auto, gets the auto. Q onto the Ziggs, and uh, Ziggs barely gets out alive with the Ignite on him We're and the done. Flash. But having a TPing in kills the Ash as she was very, very low. Said you want to hear on the backup for the Lux, and uh, what a crazy map for like one minute straight. <laughs> Just so everything we, we happening. Talk about a little bit there. The uh, the Lux zoning alt so the Ash can get the kill really well played. Um, that the fight in the top lane I think was really indicative of uh, how the itemization not really against the TK led to that trade being pretty even. Uh, the Darius expending alt going with the all in against the TK and not actually. Getting the kill, even though he's two and zero, and up a bunch of gold, uh, you know, up thirteen hundred gold at this point. Uh, at this early in the game, I mean, that's that's a big chunk. Uh, so I think the itemization may be leading towards the Darius not getting the kill there, as we look towards the Drake. Yeah, both teams really heavily looking towards Drake here as Quinstone decides to just TP in. He does have the advantage for a short amount of time on the Tom Kench. They're just going to start this one up and try and zone uh, all of your plays off. Yeah, TP advantage top lane means your, uh, your plays just has a numbers disadvantage and the Drake just goes over to GMP. Yeah. Not really much they can do about it. Yeah, they just try and take it. Oh, Charm coming out of the Ari. Very good spell shield from the uh, Nocturne there. And a uh, little bit of damage coming out from the Lux onto the Soraka. But, I mean, Soraka might just back heal that up. Very good Charm again onto the Darius. But Darius says, I'm too tanky for that. I got Merc Treads. I got Bramble Vest. He does have Bramble Vest. <laughs> it doesn't help in that particular trade, but he does have it. <laughs> Hearthbound Axe, I think. He might, be, maybe he might just be looking been. for this kill here as he E's onto the Tom Kench. W's, Q's. Doesn't really have much now except for autos as Nocturne does come in for the follow up. Looking for the fear. Gets the fear. Quinso gets the R and uh, doesn't actually execute, but the kill's right afterwards. So uh, very good communication on the side of GNP to get that, to initiate that fight and force that Tom Kench to fight into him. And that's exactly uh, why they picked this Tom Kench is, I, uh, even in that fight, you know, it took the Nocturne ulting up. It took the Sorak ulting from bot lane. And even then it was still kind of close. Uh, oh, very big Zigzar there. Does a lot of damage. Not really enough to get any kills, though. So. Area 95 is on. Living with about 30 health. health. <laughs> Maybe a little Living bit less by the time 20, I clicked. 20 at the very least, yeah. Somewhere, uh, somewhere close to zero. Um. Um, yeah, I mean, it expended so much just to kill this TK. And yeah. really I mean, they a did. Lot of they stop. did get the Rift Herald out of it. Nocturne is sitting on that right now. It does have it as a uh, a passive, I guess, if you will. So we'll see where he decides to try and drop that to try and get some tower down as the first turret. Um, I would assume not top lane. as It's already looking pretty low from the nice. constant pushing from the Darius. But we'll see. We'll see where he decides to go. Maybe they make a play and... Get a couple kills and take a turret or two off of it. Wow. 
So, um, as far as mythics, I do want to point out that the side of GMP does have four mythics on the board at the moment compared to the zero on the side of Yoplay's. I think that just has to do with their backs. Um, it's a Eminem low. diving in on Area 95 gets the kill with the Ignite and the R, but he's going to get stunned up, maybe possibly charmed with the uh, Ari jumping in, but uh, Nocturne jumps in, denies the vision, not able to get that pick. Yogurt on floor might actually go down to this Nocturne after the fact, but he jumps over with the Blast Cone and ends up dying too. So HXC on the Soraka. Ends up being a two for zero there, actually, with a very good heads up play from Emenek to just go on to the uh, Lux there and burst down the squishy target. And that's what we're talking about, right? If this, if they can dive onto these squishy targets before the CC can really stop them, they really don't have a chance. They just can't live. Yeah, and they do summon Rift Herald mid. Do end up barely getting the first turret, actually, because that Rift Herald was pretty low whenever it hit the last hit. But they do get the first turret, so that's a big gold in the pockets on the side of GMP for getting that Rift Herald. The other thing hold inhibiting the uh, mythic items is the tax that the uh, Yo plays have been paying. The Tom Catch paying the Bramble tax, the Ari paying the Seekers tax, the Ash paying the Executioner's tax. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of gold needing to be spent before those mythics could come through, really putting them just a little bit behind. That is true, as Eminic trying to go on Mr. Fluger Blues here, but TP coming in from the Tom Kench here on the backside of the Darius. Don't know if he's going to get here in time. Gets the Q's slow off. Don't know if he's going to look for a, a knockup maybe onto the backside here. As Prince gets knocked up and CC'd. Big CC, like we said, coming out of the uh, Yo plays there as they oh. end up taking him down. But a big <laughs> ultimate's coming down for both sides as they dive into the backside of the team here from GMP. End up getting a few kills. Misfortune bot, or uh, Sweet Smell Suck, rather, is forced to walk away with barely his life, as it is a four for two. Emenic sealing the fate of the enemy team there, taking them all down on the backside with that ultimate. That's the power that we've seen out of this Yone that we need to see for the rest of this game for this team's success. That is exactly what we're talking about in the beginning of the game. If that Yone could find Find an angle, slip away, catch the out, catch the back side of the team. They're gonna really find a lot of success going forward. You see the power. You've seen the power of the Zigs just pelting the enemy team the entire time. Afterwards, in the objective take with the W, everything is really coming together for GNP right now. Yeah, I mean they're really looking for these dives as uh, Harry. Goes onto Mr. Fluger Blues, but gets the four stacks, gets stunned up, gets Lux queued, and a uh, little bit ambitious there, maybe from him, uh, trying to go onto that Sejuani with the the amount of CC that is on the team of Yo plays, but uh, very good punish, and uh, he might he might rethink that invade next time, I guess. <laughs> Dream scenario for the Yo plays. Cashing in 700 gold to the Ashes pocket. They absolutely need their entire bankroll on that champion. The Zyana was going to have to pull this one out if this team is hoping to survive this game. She has all the tools. She has a great front line. She has excellent burst. Uh, if she can get ahead, she can provide all those deeps. This team's got a real shot at this game, even with even being down three drakes and seven kills. All this to say, though, it's not even a 4,000 gold lead for GNP, so they're not out of the woods yet. No, I mean, I think both teams actually scale very well into team fights. Um, maybe Darius, not so much as the Tom Kench, as far as Tom Kench just being a tank, but uh, 
That being said, Darius can always just get five stacks on someone, R, and uh, just win the team fight solo almost. So it's it's really hard to tell how it'll go later on. As Eminik is going in one v two onto the Lux and Mr. Yoga Drum Four does get CC'd up, but not enough to actually get the kill. As uh, both his support and his jungler is on the backside here, trying to help him Baraka. secure this side wave. <laughs> Super fun and interactive champion. Eminek just sits back, waits for the W twice from Soraka, and oh look! Full Your health. Hyper carries full health. <laughs> Imagine that. Just <laughs> full health. The, uh, the Lux doesn't have as much burst as she needs yet to take down a champion with Shield Bow. Um, no. But and that is the power that you know she's shown here on this Lux. They kind of need. They need to be able to blow those champions up. They need to be able to take down this Yon and uh, Ziggs. As we see, a, can you see Yon in the chat? I don't know. If League's bugging, maybe. Uh, not sure. We'll see if that. Uh, for Ends up being a thing I think, at all or not, but uh, I, I think I think that she's asking if you can if they can always see Yon, like if Yon is permanently revealed oh. because he has maybe. If you look at Yon's character model now, he's got the eyes over him like he can be seen. Oh, okay. So I see what you're saying. That's probably some kind of bug for sure, yeah. Yon TPing into the top lane here with more Misfortune Bot and Aerie95. Um, gets the R on just the Tom Kench. Get the pick on the Tom Kench. Big Lux all coming on. Big damage on both of those team members, but uh, they are, uh, the Atch is forced to flash away afterwards as uh, there is four members of GMP here to try and take this top turret. And down it goes. That's the Ziggs. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's one Ziggs W and it's just gone. <laughs> they don't have to stick around we, and waste they, their time. Uh, they know that the Ari and Sejuani is gone there. Yeah. As the pings come out on a Baron, I was going to say, I would not be surprised if they just went for Baron. They don't really have an ADC, though, to put out big damage besides, I guess, the Yone. Uh, but... Yone puts out big damage to Baron. Don't but, worry. I mean, with the Sejuani and the mid laner being bot lane, after just getting that pick, I'm surprised they didn't immediately go for it. But uh, maybe want to play a little bit more safer, take the game slower, and maybe scale up. Spot, him. spot the Sejuani. No, he didn't see it. Somebody just pinged it. Somebody just pinged the Sejuani. They might collapse. Oh, they did not collapse on that. But Ooh, I'm gonna go in onto the Sejuani there a little bit. A little bit of a trade. He is on the, the far side of the fight from the rest of his team. Drake actually helping out the Sejuani. Uh, the Sejuani immolate passive actually proccing the Drake and pushing him to safety. Clutch moment from They're looking for a pick on the own here as he ease forward. R's into nobody, actually. Doesn't get much there. Nocturne jumping in onto the back of the fight. Doesn't get much. Gets stunned up. Quintstone trying to do as much as he can on the Darius ends up getting the um, <clears throat> Sejuani that was the Ziggs. The Darius R did not go through here, but uh, there's still five surviving members of GMP versus the four of Yoplays. They're kind of just trying to kite as much as they can, but the shields from uh, both the Soraka and the Yon W are just a little bit too much to actually take him down and get that shutdown. He's seen it there. That's <clears throat> even even though the even though GNP was diving onto the ash, she still had so much feel and so much safety from the Sejuani and the TK, just basically standing on top of her that she's able to actually make it out alive. Had the uh Ari and Lux Maybe been able to be a little closer to the fight. They would have been able to put out the damage they needed to to turn it around. But unfortunately, you know, super well played by GMP to split them up and really shove that Ari and Lux off to the side and make the dive on the Ash possible. Yeah, I mean, that whole team fight was really awkward in the way it played out with the, the Yone actually engaging to start. 
and then all of them kind of being uh, back towards the blue buff gromp area. Not being able to do much without being in a choke for the most part, so. I would like to see a, a true 5v5 team fight, maybe in a more, a little bit more open of an area, but that kind of relies on your plays actually getting some vision down and being able to push into the, the area they want to fight in before they take that fight. All lanes are CSing pretty well. They all have uh, around the same CS. Ash oh. really being the only difference maker coming up with about 10 to 15 CS more than their lane opponent. But everybody else seems very even. Yeah, Namanek fighting this uh, Tom Kenshin in the top lane. I think he just kind of wins that as he does have the damage to just out sustain the Tom Kench even with this Tom Kench having Bramble or actually... Uh, What's it called? Thornmail. Thornmail tab eye. And the, uh, the frost fire, but... Yeah, 4, 1, and 7. I mean, that's just gonna do it, yeah. right? Does Let's have the anti-heal. Has the heal himself, so... <laughs> Man, it's definitely a threat to be reckoned with. Potential pick bush coming out. Ooh, some big There's damage under the Soraka. But, uh, you know, Soraka can just walk away and stand at the back of the fight from now on. Not really much to do for either team now. I mean, anyone could threaten Baron, but they both have vision on it at the moment, so. I don't think there's much to commit to. As Sejuani dives for it, gets the double proc of W onto the Yone, gets the stun. Tom Kench coming in for the knockup, but the R from the Yone onto the back line almost takes the Xanamor's health down to zero. Gets stunned up by the Ash R, and uh, Airy 95 gets taken down. This uh, Sejuani is going to get taken down as well. And uh, that's a two for zero for the side of GNP. The healing from the Soraka is just too much for this team to take. They cannot burst down anybody on the member, any any member of the Glaze Not Human Primates. And that was the issue we were talking about again at the beginning of the game. That if this team couldn't find. Uh, the burst on this team, then they wouldn't be able to survive the long haul because they just don't have the damage. Ash really being the only damage dealer, she's just not able to be close to anybody because she just zoned away the entire fight. Yeah, I mean, when you're in, almost your entire health bar is taken away by one Yonar, uh, you can't really step up in the fight after that because if you get Q3'd by Yon, you're just dead. But, uh,. They definitely need to look for like a, a huge chain CC onto one member of a uh, GMP if they want to get back into the game a little bit more, as they are almost 7k or a little bit more than 7k gold down. Yeah, it needs, it's gonna be pick city, and even then with the Soraki heal from uh, I don't know anywhere, it still might be hard. That's why, and it didn't, and it did not hit Airy ninety five apparently. <laughs> yeah, apparently it did not hit her. <laughs> it did that. not hit her. <laughs> um, that is definitely why I was saying they have to try and pick this Soraka, uh, in the team fights because if not, Soraka can just heal everyone up, and uh, suddenly they're full HP while they've taken chunks out of uh, the Oplays. Quinstan is still sitting on that Bramble Vest. I'm just going to point out from early game. <laughs> Bramble Vest, still not a completed item. <laughs> is what? opting what? for, it looks it. like, uh, what is it, Dead Man's Plate? With the, the move speed yeah, item yep. and the uh, Warden's yep. Mail. 
They're looking for a pick onto him here as Lux Q barely does not reach, but Nocturne looking for the backup here. Fast boy. Yeah, I mean, they could possibly turn us if they wanted to as Quidstone pulls in the Sejuani. TP coming in from the Eminic on the Yone here. And uh, they might be looking for a team fight here. Uh, Eminic are coming in, instantly deleting that Lux and uh, yeah, I mean, that they just chased a little bit too far there, I think. Yeah, I mean, this is just... Uh, this is just an excellent performance coming out of Eminem specifically. I mean, he's just doing everything. He's showing up for every team fight, really turning the tide whenever they need it. Uh, hard to argue with his performance in Game 1. And you also have to love what you see out of Snack the Dipper here. 3-1-6. Completed Seraphs, completed Leandries, tier two boots, even a stopwatch to boot. He's got all the tools to really put all that poke out, all that wave clear out, and take down some of these towers. Yeah, I mean, I think I think every member, to be honest, is doing their part very well. Uh, Nocturne getting some good R's after the initial engage to deny vision. Uh, Soraka is always there to heal up, and then uh, Darius is kind of there to be the beefy boy that he is. And kind yeah, of Darius front line exerted for their his team. early game pressure, um, and he's translated that into a very decent sec uh, second half of the game as well. Really making plays, level 6, 17. Um, really doing his best out there as well. I mean, you can just see the poke coming down. It's really only the Soraka Q and the Ziggs, but uh, just between them, Able to proc Xanamore's Ooh, Mortal Big shield. charm on the MAC there, but not. they don't have anyone to follow up as he dives across the wall. R is onto the Lux and instantly deleted with that uh, Elder buff. So they are going to be able to push into the space here with it being a 4v5. Not sure if Yoplays is going to be able to actually hold onto this. They might go for a Baron here as it is up in a minute 50. No, looking for the end, actually. Dead. Yeah, they're looking for the end. Winstone's a little deep. A little deep, but Soraka's there for the heals. Anti-healing yeah, so coming through, but... Doesn't uh, matter. They do still have Elder, so... If any one member of Yoplay's missteps, they can be deleted even faster than usual with the, uh, the Elder buff coming in. We do see the Yone Fate Seal. This coming up again in probably about 15 to 20 seconds. 20 seconds on the alt. Uh, that's a lot of damage coming out. And they're very, really playing this one safe. They're walking the top lane here, trying to take the top lane turret as well, maybe the top and hib. We'll see if uh, your place tries to defend the and hib in any kind of way, because I don't think if they don't actually defend this and hib, uh, they can just go bam and end the game. <laughs> Big whiff from the own. <laughs> So, uh, I think that's the first real big whip. I mean, the the other one was at the dragon, but here Winston we go. Winston was getting ran down, but he turns around on the fight with the rest of his team here. Uh, gets the five stacks onto the Tom Cage. Tom Cage flashes away. The Animore peeling as best as she can as an Ash gets R'd by the Darius. Nocturne diving in, finishing up that kill. And uh, Eminem on the backside taking down the Lux. And it's a... Two for zero at the moment as uh, Quinso's still trying to get in on this team while they're uh, retreating to the fountain. I think that's gonna be GG. Yeah, that's a good first performance out of uh, out of GNP. Really liked how they played that game, start to finish. Really, really just a complete win out of uh, out of GNP in game one. And uh, with that, we'll just go ahead and take like a five minute shit break until uh, the teams are ready. And okay, we'll be back. 805, maybe? 805 or 810? Yeah, we'll probably 805. Play. Yeah. All right.
What you gonna do now? It's your reflection looking back to pull you down. So are you gonna die today? Just never die when the world is calling you. Can you hear them screaming out your name? Legends never die. They never lose hope when everything's cold and the fighting's near. He's deep in their bones, they're running to smoke when the fire is fierce. Oh, pick yourself up. Legends never die 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 They're written down in a time Things lost, they pick up their hearts and abandon their fate. Before it all starts, they suffer through harms to touch your tree.
Hello, what's up? I think we are uh, ready for game number two. I believe we are. I believe it is time. Should be seeing the draft come up here soon. But before we get on to that, what did you think of game one? <sighs> um, man, I don't know. I think that both team comps were good. I think that the the Yon just got a little bit too far ahead versus the Ari. I don't know if the, the matchup was a little bit too much or what, but um, that kind of translated into a lot of the other leads that the team had. Darius didn't necessarily have too much of a lead on Tom Kench that it wasn't like insurmountable. Uh, Ash was ahead. Certainly wasn't insurmountable. He almost won v two. It was close. Um, the Ash was ahead, so like, I mean, the Yon was a pretty big deal in getting rid of the the Lux and bursting down the Ash whenever he dove into the back line. So we'll see what they opt for here as Fizz is being hovered and banned away from GNP. What I did like is that Eminik put on his carry pants and he made it happen. That's something out of Eminik we're used to seeing a little more of a supportive mid laner kind of style. Uh, you know, likes to play the Seraphine where he doesn't have to do, you know, doesn't make no crazy outplays. He just does his job, clears the wave, gets a CS, presses that R key, makes it happen for the team. But that game really felt like he made it happen for himself. He really exerted pressure in the mid lane. Really kind of, he kind of just styled out. He just, he had a good time. Had a great game, and played with a little uh, played with a little fire, and I was really happy to see that out of him. Yep, as uh, the Yon is the Yon and the Fizz are both going to get banned away from this game. Uh, yeah, the, definitely earned it. Definitely <clears throat> earned it after game one. The Mordekaiser are being banned away again from uh, Quinstone on the side of GMP. Same bans coming out from GMP with the MF, Anasis, and the Vex. So. We'll see what the Yoplays plan to pick first. What is your speculation on this first pick? Not that. Not Poppy? <laughs> Not that. I don't think we've seen Poppy played at all in the league. It's probably Poppy Jungle, if I had to guess. Um, I doubt that Sweet Smell of Suck would pick Poppy, let alone pick Poppy first. Um, the Soraka Ziggs, yeah, I mean, where's the fault in that, right? Yeah, I mean, didn't, was not bad for them last game, so why, why change it up? I was gonna say, Nami Lucian, question mark? Yeah. Uh, looks like... It could be the pick here. We'll see if Lucian comes along with the Nami, but we what know Area 95. Ah! Oh, Sivir. No! That's not, not Lucian. Not, not the same amount of pressure as Nami Lucian, but uh, still can have good pressure. Yeah. I don't think uh, Sivir is necessarily a, a... Or, I mean, Lucian is necessarily a, a Xeno War champ. Sivir is such a push the wave into you type thing and Ziggs is such a push the wave into you type thing and Nami and Soraka are both hey I'm gonna let the ADC kind of do their dang oh, it feels like it's gonna be such a boring lane in the bot lane I don't know they're gonna farm it out they have 9 CS a minute because they're both just gonna farm uh, I was looking for the zest Man. where's the action <laughs> Doesn't always happen that way, but uh, Shen being picked up for GNP here. That is a uh, Quinstone champ that was not banned compared to last game, so we'll see what Mr. Sweet Smell Suck has to pick into it. Look at Shen. What a man. He always looks so manly. Doesn't he? Look at that Chadley gentleman. I mean, he's doing some ninja stuff there. He's doing... He's, so much, he's doing some cool ninja guy stuff. The 
warranted a soul ban. Now, I like this ban out of the outplays a lot. I like these bans. Push Eminic farther and farther down. They didn't pick him. Then yeah. They're going to send him down. I like I like that they got rid of the Yone, and now they're doubling down in the second uh, second half of bans. Uh, taking away that Seraphine, one, a classic Eminic champion. Uh, taking away Mao Zahar. Super easy playmaking ability. Really he, like what they He done will the still get the counter pick. As they do pick Nocturne for their jungler again, but uh, interested to see uh, what he plans on counter picking with uh, four of his main champs being banned out. LeBlanc. LeBlanc. I know uh, right. Yogurt, Yogurt on floor, floor likes that. <clears throat> Yogurt, your turn to put on the carry pants, my friend. I like the LeBlanc pick. Uh, it's going to be maybe a little tough into Shen with Shen's playmaking ability around the map. Hopefully, uh, we'll see if he gets thwarted or not. Kale. Hmm. Hmm, a little bit of the lane swap really? action going on, Monka. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we no, do I know. Kale goes top. Yogurt but... does like to play Kale. Yeah, but Yogurt also likes to play a LeBlanc. It's that is true. Yogurt on LeBlanc. I can't imagine Sweet Smell of Suck plays LeBlanc. I don't know. Eyes coming out for Eminem. <laughs> So, uh, GNP is going to be like all over the map, yeah? I mean, yeah, I mean, kind of. I mean, global they alt, are. global alt, semi global alt, global alt, semi global alt, semi global alt. You know, just, I mean, you know, they're looking. going around the world. <laughs> they're going around. <laughs> like Daft Punk would say, around the world. <laughs> they're they're going to be visiting lanes. <laughs> They're going to be uh, non-human primates together strong. Oh, yeah. They're uh, definitely going to be sending the Yo plays straight to jail. Do not pass go. <laughs> I really like the playmaking potential at, all, out of the Yo plays, uh, but the team-wide team -wide access out of the GNP. Uh, it's going to be about these solo lanes for Yo plays. Can they make it happen? Can LeBlanc make it happen? Can Kale make it happen on the top? Can he can she survive long enough to be becoming that monster? Uh, Sivernami, I bet they're going to make it happen and clear the waves. Uh, that's my bet. <laughs> I would imagine, yeah. And is this Poppy Jungle going to be able to fly around the map and do that thing? We shall see. We shall see. So it is a Kale top lane. Obviously going to be a Shen top lane. Well, I don't think we've... We haven't seen Poppy at all. So I'm wondering if this is like a Mr. Fluge or Bluge pick. <laughs> or if it's a, a situational kind of thing. He did first pick it though, so... I can't imagine that it's a situational thing because... You can't just guess that everyone else is on the other team is going to pick a dashing champion. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I agree. I think uh, I think it might just be a Fluger Bludge champion. Fluger Bludge. Fluger Bludge. Fluger Bludge. <laughs> One of those. It's in there. <clears throat> he's somewhere in the world. He's sitting there like, man, these guys are idiots. <laughs> they don't even know my name. Probably means something completely different in Norwegian, but we're unaware. <laughs> it probably means something else in Norwegian. Oh, that's good. Google Translate. How are we? Let me find out. That'll give me the uh, pronunciation. Trans what did he play? What did he play first game? Sejuani. They got a tank hey, jungler player now, apparently. Luger is Danish for flies, and it's actually Flua. 
Huh. Flies? Flies Fly. bludge. I don't know what bludge would mean. Nah. If it means anything. Probably not no region. Probably not it, in the region. It's probably not Danish. Sounds sounds kind of Danish, though. So not gonna lie. <laughs> maybe uh, uh, maybe after the games, if he hops in for interviews. Oh yes. That'll be a question. Yeah. For sure. Question number one. <laughs> what hey, does, what, where, where did the fluger bluge, fluger bluge come from? <laughs> jungler for yo plays. How do you say this? Uh, <laughs> question one. Uh, what do you? What are your predictions for game two? I mean, GMP at the moment looking kind of blue. They got the Shen, they got the Nocturne, Rise, and Soraka. They're purple. But in the way of team comps. I feel like they're kind of. I feel like GMP is kind of divided on the way they want to play, but it it almost feels the same way for Yo plays. Like both teams have like team fighting champions, but then they like they have Nocturne, and then they also have like LeBlanc. Like both those champions just kind of want to jump in and then get out. Well, I mean Nocturne can't really get out, but both of them want to jump into the back line. While as the rest of the team looks like a very like front to back kind of team fight team. Yeah, it's. I agree. I don't really know what to uh, <coughs> what to make of uh, these team comps here. I mean, definitely G and P is team global, but when it comes to the team fights, how is that gonna? Yeah. How is that going to play out when it comes to securing those objectives? What do your globals if, do if, when everyone's right beside each other? Right there. <laughs> Whereas uh, your plays, definitely big scaling, I feel like. Oh, yeah, for sure. Depending on what they go with the Sivir, whether they go uh, the Dark Harvest or the actual crit build. I think crit build's just bad now, correct? Yeah, 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 it's just bad. So I would imagine they go the uh, Dark Harvest. But the only tank on the other team is the Shen. And even then, Shen is more of a team player. So I doubt he's going to build too much uh, armor when there's an, a LeBlanc and a Kale on the enemy team. We shall see how they're able to make it happen. Uh... See whenever we get in a game, I guess. Yeah, got a solid 60 seconds. Just uh, jam out for a little bit here. What are the caster questions of the day? What does Becky like to ask? Um, I mean... What's your favorite dessert? What's your favorite <laughs> dessert? <laughs> the real question is... Dessert or main course, which is better? Oh, I mean main course, right? Obviously, but some be, some people are dessert people, right? Like definitely not me. I eat I eat too much to be a dessert guy. I got yeah. I got too much of the main course on the mind. I'll take a big ass steak and a baked potato over dessert oh, any day. Over dessert every day, hundred percent. I'm with you on that one, brother. Nothing, nothing's gonna beat Texas Roadhouse. Totally not sponsored. <laughs> But if you want to be, I mean, like, come on in. <laughs> Texas Roadhouse got the rolls. They're amazing. The cinnamon butter, fantastic. But nothing beats the main course. A couple of mushrooms. The steak. Ah. Oh. oh my gosh. Hard to beat. For sure. And uh. We're hopping into game number two. I have the stuff messed up. Yo Plays does not have a um, <clears throat> a game to themselves yet. Could very well be this game, but they do Could not have it. Well. Something is messed up with my streaming setup, so all good now. GMP 1-0 at the moment. We'll see what they try to do here for level one. Do you think anybody goes for an invade here? 
Nah, both teams seem pretty weak early. I doubt anybody looks for this level one. Yeah, I think it'll be a standard five man on both sides of the map. Ziggs is, is a little bit late to the map, but I don't know. Not going to really matter. Oh, they're looking for a little bit of a collapse here on Emanek as he's uh, cues onto Yogurt on the floor. Gets half of his health taken by the Electrocute and the Poppy. Poppy did opt for Dark Harvest on this jungle build. So kind of interested to see how they're going to be playing uh, with that runestone in mind. Yeah, Dark Harvest is generally what you'll see on Poppy. Uh some poppies elect to go electrocute, I think, uh, but I, I'm pretty sure Dark Harvest is just, you know, the the better one. Really, I did not was not aware of the poppy jungle uh, strats. I've I've seen some poppy jungles with ignite, and uh, the ones that I have seen definitely know what they're doing, and kind of just pop off. So we'll see if Mister Fluger Bluge can uh, do that in this game. Oh, <laughs> uh, Jesus. It's, it's funnier every time you say it. <laughs> Both junglers opting for a bottom side start as Poppy does go to the top side immediately. Jared and Flora going for early trades with Emnick. Emnick getting the phase rush off, and it's fairly even, I, I would say, but the, uh, the light I, does have corrupting. I don't know how I feel about this from Fluger Bluge. Uh, Pop Poppy's clear really includes Raptors and Wolves as their AOE camps. Yeah. Um, and Poppy's <clears throat> main clearing technique is her Q. Uh, Might just be looking for an early level three into a gank. I would Maybe. assume that gank would go top lane, but uh, Quinso did just ward the river brush, so... Yeah, and Kale's not exactly the best lane in gank. Uh, no, but he can... He, the poppy can't stop the dash from the Shen, so... Shen can't really get away. Maybe that's the idea here. As he does walk into the top lane, you're gonna floor getting good sun on Ammonix, so... But, uh... Shen able to walk away enough, I would assume, to get the E away. Uh, directed camera is not going to let us know exactly what happened. But, uh, Yogurt it's looking like a, a lot of better lane versus the Rise. Feels like a lot of wasted time for the Poppy here. Um, may get this uncontested scuttle as he here he looks to clear his Raptors. I mean, he's only down one camp. I guess one and a half, technically, if you think about it. Oh, that's some big damage coming out of LeBlanc early, even. LeBlanc not necessarily known for early damage as much as being able to side lane and pick people off later on in the game. But uh, that being said, Ryze is also a big scale champ. Oh, Quinstone taking a big trade here as a Hiri is on the top side with his Nocturne. Not going to get the fear off, barely, but uh, does force the flash out away from the Kale. And that's going to be an easy return gank if the lane's set up properly. And the Nocturne showing topside means that this Poppy just double scuttles him. Um, which, you know, lucked out for the Poppy, I think, because... I, I think the Poppy's uh, first clear was a little... Off sus. Sus. A little sus. A little sus. <laughs> Actually invading the enemy team's uh, bottom side. Looking like she's taking the Gromp, I would assume. Nocturne looking for the return gank here onto the Kale, but Kale is aware with the ward. With double ward, actually. I'm both the try and the... Uh, I like to really call it trying to make sure he doesn't get ganked. He's really uh, <clears throat> doubling down. Let's see if the poppy goes for the deep hit. Huh? She sees hmm. Nocturne's top, could go for it. It is free. He is there. She does does see him there and uh, elect to take his uh, wolves as well. Yeah, I mean, if that if that Nocturne's just gonna sit top lane, might as well take everything he's got, right? 
Don't yeah, give him anything sure. to do on the other side of the map. <laughs> I am interested to see how long it takes for Poppy's Raptors to go down. I mean, here he is still here. In thought. Yeah, they're looking to start this dragon, even though there is vision from the mid laner here. Um, both mid laners being chunked out to about a quarter health. Nocturne finally backs, but I don't know if he's going to be there in time to actually like contest this dragon, as it is already at 600 health. Yeah, that's the, all of that is a product of uh, here just being topside. Drake up, Nocturne shows multiple times in top lane, and it's a Drake, an extra CS Drake on down. the side of Poppy. Yeah. That that is a uh, I don't know what it's technically called, but a, a water Drake, I would oh, call it. Uh oh, big, big turret shots being taken there. If it was not oh. in lane, oh, Quinn Stafford with a flash E taunt uh, onto the uh, LeBlanc there ends up picking up the first kill of the game. Well, Emenik picking up the first kill of the game, but helping to pick up the first kill of the game. That's okay. That's where that's where that's where uh, Shen wanted it. Jen wants it on his teammates. Caught the uh, caught the LeBlanc slipping a little bit there. LeBlanc TP flashing in. Ends up getting the counter kill onto the rise. Not going to be worth as much, but the the lane prio kind of important, especially when the rise does not have the TP up. So a little bit of a gold advantage coming back onto the side of uh, the yo place there. Most likely. I don't know exactly how much first blood is worth. Yogurt on floor is a bad man. He knew exactly what he was doing. He TP'd saying, oh, I'm flashing, and I'm getting this kill. Knowing his damage, able to have the calm and cool collected nature to be able to whip out them skill shots. Really made it happen there. Props to Yogurt on floor for that return kill. Yeah, and as far as CS goes, the uh, the Sivir is at the moment edging out that Ziggs a little bit on the CS with 55 to 37. Um, not too crazy of a difference anywhere else. Mid lane is about a wave ahead uh, on the LeBlanc, but that might have just been because of that last TP mid. And uh, jungle, as we were saying before, we, we kind of know how that cut uh, a differential, so... Yeah, uh, what I find amazing is the uh, the Poppy's level one Raptors are still there. <laughs> still there. He's looking. He's looking. He's looking for the quick clear, right? Later on, whenever you're oh, leveled up. Yeah. Oh, that's big stuns against that rise. Rise not able to do anything as uh, Quinstone does TP in, gets taunt onto the Poppy, and Poppy's gonna get stunned up. And feared by the Nocturnes, and uh, not much she can do about that either. So, uh, one for one in the grand scheme of things, but they do get to teleport out of the top lane. So, teleport advantage there. I think the Poppy was was thinking they were gonna turn on the Hishinshin teleport in the mid lane. Uh, alas, Nocturne was there uh, and able to turn it on that Poppy there with the ultimate. Being said, there is a 10 CS lead now here in the top lane. Uh, the longer the game goes on, the bigger that Kale's going to get as far as uh, being scary for the rest of the team. As they're looking for a fight here, I would imagine he has to know that the Nocturne is around as uh, the Shen does not just walk up like that on his own free will. Are coming out of the Kale there. Not going to be able to keep her alive long enough as it does go down to the Shen. You can see the CS advantages already coming out in every lane in favor of the Yo plays. Uh, that being said, uh, still down a kill, but up gold. Um, product of that CS and uh, 
Fludger, Fludger Blooch coming back in here into the top <laughs> mid lane, looking for Emanek. Emanek's just going to be forced to walk all the way down. I would assume he has to see this Shen R coming through. Yeah, walks away immediately with the W, gets that move speed. That Shen skin is pay to win. Huh? You can't see that. <laughs> it is so hard to see. Does force him out of lane for a good bit there and forces the Shen R, so... Oh, big Nami bubble with the electric coming out onto Emanek. We'll see if uh, Yogurt on Floor is able to follow up, and that's big damage with the stun. Sivir did really... use R as well. Oh, no. Really taking advantage of the immobile mage in the mid lane. That uh. LeBlanc really applies pressure early on that <laughs> in that kind of a matchup, and they are showing the knowledge. Oh, very good special shield out of the Nocturne there to block the actual stun coming out from the poppy but uh, they're looking for this dragon but the GNP does not want to give it away it seems yeah and why would they I mean they got this uh, early advantage they got levels uh, yoga lore is big but that oh, man. Said they're just going on it it's at 1400 already uh, Nami Bubble getting blocked by the Nocturne uh, Spell Shield and the Dragon taken down already, so they're not able to walk into the area they need to in order to pressure that Dragon and take it, but... They wanted it. They they were there and wanted it for sure, so... We'll see what happens at the next one, as that is going to be the uh, next soul point. While, while we were... Uh panning towards the bot side, the mid lane Yogurt on floor is just exerting his dominance right now. Absolutely forcing his will onto his opponent. Uh, sort of like what we were seeing last game, but in the other way around. The Yon, uh, very dominant last game for Emenik. This game, the LeBlanc on Yogurt seems to be a very strong pick, and he's really, really pushing his advantage. I mean, that kind of makes me wonder if maybe... They banned out all those mid picks, kind of for this specific matchup, if that's what they had in mind, or if that's what Yogurt on Floor maybe had in mind. It is possible. As like you're right. looking for the wraparound gank in top lane. I mean, he has R. He can definitely if Kale steps up too far and gets uh, taunted, he can R straight in. But uh, Poppy is on the Rift Herald, able to rotate quickly. Does not have R herself. They were definitely looking for it there, as uh, Nocturne did step out into the vision. So they do know he's there now, and they have to uh, back off. Or at least have the knowledge that he's there, so... Free reign for bot lane to push them in, actually. Things are starting to get scary for GNP. This Kale in the top lane is scaling. The LeBlanc in the mid lane is smashing. The Sivir in the bot lane is having, uh, having huge CS success. Uh, this is starting to pull away, and it looks like they need to make plays now. I mean, it's really time for those uh, global and semi-global ults to come through as Poppy gets a big stunt on Eminem here in the mid lane with Nocturne following up on the backside with Quinstone using his R but flashes and uh, any kind of mobility expended on the side of Yoplays and they're able to get away from those big ultimate and the uh, the Nocturne R. So that is, again, just free oh. free push for the top lane here. It's a big bubble coming down onto the uh, Chen. Not able to follow up on it really. Oh, good stun onto the Nocturne. Not enough damage still though, but R Nami R coming through. Gonna disengage away from that fight before they can counter engage and do any damage on the side of your place. Rift Herald doesn't really get much. I don't think plates were still up, correct? No, plates were down. Um, you may, we may not have caught it in the middle of that fight, but Xehanort actually ended up catching the Rise who had the blue buff on and transferring the blue buff to her. Huge bonus for her in that regard. Um, the, a sever with blue buff is really, really difficult to deal with, even as Ziggs. Yeah, I mean, speaking of really difficult to deal with, Kale is at the point where she gets those range autos, and that's going to be really tough for this Shen as 
Bluger Bluch does get Snack the Dipper pinned against the wall, gets the R on the two members, but not going to be able to pin him up for long enough for the rest of the team to come through with the damage. But very scary how easily they're going to be able to pick team members uh, in these fights with the CC that they do have. That kills autos now providing uh, the waves, the wave clear after the fifth stack. Really scary stuff for the side of. Uh, Yo, please? From the side of the Yo plays, not for. Scary, scary stuff from the Yo plays here. I imagine the LeBlanc will back and grab Ludens here, and that is a big power spike for her as well. There it is. Yeah, I mean, they're sitting at Ooh. 3k gold up at the moment. Kale's gonna Kale have a winning. In. Kale's gonna have a winning matchup in the top versus the Shen. Like, I'm, I don't. The GMP is gonna have to really try and flex, like, the uh, a 131 of some sort and use the global ultimates as. Eminic does get picked here by Mr. Fluger Bluge. Again, as Shen ulti coming in to save him barely. Uh, they're not gonna be able to get anything on the back of that fight as uh, Eminic does have to walk away as he has 10 health pretty much. Quinso diving back in, gets knocked up by the. Nami R flashes away from the uh, Q as well, and uh, there's a little bit too trapped here from the rest of the team and Yoga on floor. Does not actually go down tanky enough to stay alive, but they do pick up the, the rise there. Yes, slight mechanical misplay from Yoga on floor there, I believe. Um, and uh, leads to them not getting the kill on the shed, but. You know, the pressure is worth it enough. I mean, oh, oh man. my goodness. And that's the things that uh, LeBlanc can do. Just hop over the wall, do a quarter of your health, and hop back before Sword a turret back. shot even goes through. And this, <clears throat> this Kale 0 1 and 0, but farm fed. That is a Nebraska corn husker fed. Boy in the top lane, that is. <laughs> and the uh, the man he, is gonna be heavy. He pings it himself in chat. He does have a 200 gold bounty now. I assume he probably said, I'm pretty fed. He probably said something oh, like, Nami getting caught out. Why do I have with a Nocturne bounty? going in, almost gets the fear, and the Nami forced to flash away from that before she dies. Almost a good pick there. Uh, Would have led into a little bit more, but uh, good flash away to. Kind of save themselves from getting into a bad fight. Uh, oh, looking for a pick on the rise here. Yogur jumps forward, misses the E. But uh, that being said, Kale is here <laughs> autoing away as uh, Aminic is forced to use the uh, Realm Warp away. Yeah. Ends up with about a third of his health. That being said, he's walking straight back in, looking for the kill here. Gets instantly deleted by both uh, the uh, LeBlanc and the K on top lane. Uh, Quinzo forced to walk away. Uh, Sox trying uh, to heal as much as he can, but they're kind of trickle feeding here into the Yo plays as uh, uh, they end up going three uh, for zero. It's disaster for GNP. A triple kill going over to the already strong Kale. Looks like he's gonna be an unstoppable force here soon. I don't know what Eminic was doing there. I don't, I mean, if you're gonna go for that play, you at least let the Shen walk up first, right? Yeah, I mean, if anything, maybe Shen Savard a little bit Sooner? Or he didn't even R before, actually. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, he, he R, he used the, uh, the, uh, Stan United whenever the Rise Realm Warp was coming down so that he for sure was able to oh live until. Oh my goodness. god! And that's, uh, that's LeBlanc for you there. <laughs> I guess I should just never talk just because there is the always ever present threat <laughs> of LeBlanc just doing that. Um,. Mm. 
I mean, LeBlanc's at that point where if she has vision, uh, and if you're squishy, there's a chance you're dead. <laughs> just dead. There is no counterplay. You're just kabloink, out of vision, dead. <laughs> Unfortunate shadow dash from Shen there, not getting over the wall. Was looking for that Nami. I did not see that particular play. I was looking at the CS here as the uh, KO is up now. 61 farm at the moment, which is pretty huge. That's about a full item as she is two and a half, while the Shen is about an item and a half. Yeah, the Kale is, uh, is going to be putting a hurting down on the enemy team here. I mean, two and a half items, Kale. Working on the, uh, Lich Bane, that's what it's called. Yeah. Working got, on the Lich Bane. She has three more levels. All right. Once she hits that 16 mark, uh, she kind of just does what it she may, wants with the true damage. It may <laughs> just be over. It's kind of like a Cassidy in the way that uh, if you don't stop them or at least slow them down before then, uh, you're really going to have a problem once they hit that... that that level mark. And you definitely don't want to speed them up. <laughs> no. No. Letting them farm side lane and also pick up some kills is definitely not ideal. I mean... If you're GMP, how do you how do you come back in this game? Oh, yogurt! The distortion, not making it over the wall. That's the second one I've seen. <laughs> uh oh, well, happens uh -oh. oh, oh, big damage. Doesn't get <laughs> doesn't get taunted though. So good, good to go back. Shen does get bubbled though. Force to flash away. Nami R coming through. Yogurt was looking for that Soraka there. Yeah. Unfortunately, the uh, ultimate not available for the LeBlanc there on the re-engage. Um, and so they're able to just walk away. As the free Infernal Soul goes over, it can't really be contested at this point. And uh, we're one more level closer in the top lane. Kale at, Kale at 14 with a Shen at 12. So uh, we're looking two more two more levels in that kill is looking pretty good in team fights. Not even in team fights necessarily. I don't think there's anybody that can really match her in the sideline. As here he tries to go onto her with the fear. Gets a lot of damage off with the um, Ziggs R with the rest of the team follow up. Uh Ends up going down actually, and the shutdown going over to uh, that Nocturne. But uh, we'll see if he can do anything with it. Now that's a little breath of life for the uh, for for the Glaze not human primates. Let's make a little, a little play bit. happen. They're actually looking at Baron right now, but uh, I'd imagine the Yo Blaze are trying to sniff this one out. Jumping in is Yogurt on floor. Mm. It's silly deleting the Soraka. Doesn't even get a chance to get the sun off as the, uh, Bobby oh jumps onto two God. different members and they just explode between the Dark Harvest procs on both the Poppy and the uh, Sivir there. It's just an insane amount of damage and they don't even get to just try and counterplay. Just too much damage out of the Sivir and the LeBlanc here. They are really running away with this game and the Kale was dead for that. Yeah, I mean, it's they... Just... It was a four, 5v4, technically. Just so much range from the Sivir and the Blanc. They just have so much distance they can cover in such a quick time. You're really never safe if you're sort of at a not not a super healthy spot. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to cast her bias, but I think your plays have outscaled uh, GMP at the moment. Yeah, I don't not trying to uh, 
I don't think there's Say anything, right? much they can do unless they get some kind of dream engaged where they uh, take members, a few members from uh, your plays on the side. I mean, that is kind of what their team comps made for with the global ultimates is picking out a couple of members and that's that is how they uh, team fight because the rest of the team can then not fight them. Yeah, I think this has really been a picture-perfect game for the LeBlanc so far. Uh, really, really have done an excellent job. Uh, really taking over the mid to early late, mid to early game, and translating that into an, ex an insanely strong late game. Uh, I mean, in the Sivir, it's just combining with that damage that LeBlanc is doing. And that's not even mentioning all the map pressure that Kale has provided against the Shen. Um, you know, three item, three item Kale, 26 minutes, Infernal Soul. I mean, what do you, th and that's not, he he's the least fed one. Yeah. I mean, he's farm fed, for sure, but. That is a, that is a Nebraska corn husk, corn husk <laughs> or farm fed. Farm fed, organic. Yeah, all, cage free. all organic. <laughs> Eminic, uh -oh. and, and here he coming in on this LeBlanc, well, LeBlanc, forced to flash away, passive comes out, Quinston. I think they're going after the wrong one. I think they he are. got baited by the uh, the duplicate oh there, as Yogurt and Fleur does pick up Nocturne on the backside. That is kind of a misplay on them for going after the uh, the fake here, as Eminic goes down as well, thinking that he has the damage to take down the LeBlanc. Very close, a little bit more damage from that rise, and maybe, maybe that's uh, a different story, but... But he has to try, right? The game's yeah, ending around I mean, him. He has to try to make the play. There's not much, yeah. There's not much you can do about that there. So, three item kill, able to just walk around. This LeBlanc is so slippery, so well played. Uh oh. Speaking of, speaking, speaking of which, he jumps back under tower instead of to the other uh, distortion. But uh, it's it's looking pretty grim at the moment for GMP. Uh, oh, Misfortune's looking to 1v3. Who, who nice. by the way, who, oh, I guess flashes you ever away. noticed this. Very respectful. Misfortune Bot is sweet smell of suck. It's just, you know, him and Misfortune Bot are brothers, so they share an account generally. Uh, and this one has all of Misfortune Bot's, uh, all of Sweet Smell Suck's champion pool. So it is Sweet Smell Suck playing, not Misfortune Bot for all those who may have been confused. Um, but. Nevertheless. Yeah, I mean, uh, they got a good pick earlier, but uh, I'm not sure what GMP does here with two inhibs down. Uh, Elder Drake coming up in 30 seconds. They have to, they have to 5v5 this, I think. Oh, uh, Eminic. Oh, don't do it, Eminic. I thought Yogurt on floor was going to dip back and... <laughs> Give him the drip. Uh huh. <laughs> they cannot even walk into their own jungle here as a uh, dragon's coming up in five seconds. No, no. I mean, this is all oh yo plays. Jungle. Yeah. I, Everything is theirs. I don't think there's much of an option here for GMP. They really. Somebody has to walk through, and there's nobody tank enough to actually walk into the rest of the team because the t rest of the team could potentially be there as Quinston flash taunts onto this uh, Kale onto the top side but the slows and the heal and the R are enough to actually get away from the rest of the team and that's going to be a free Elder Dragon for the side of Yoplays even if this Kale ends up going down but ends up taking down the uh, rise with the Elder Dragon at the very last second um, you're going to floor diving into the back line there diving into three people actually going for that uh, Soraka and uh, I think it's pretty safe to say this is probably GG with the lead that they have yeah it looks like that's gonna be it here uh, yeah oh man with the elder yeah I mean elder elder is elder buff right you know just kind of you can't walk up and trade or even team fight when the enemy team has elder buff I think this series has been a tale of two mid laners. 
Uh, game one, that Yone absolutely took yeah. over the game, and in game two, this LeBlanc was everywhere. Great series to watch, super fun. Both games were exciting. And I think both teams really showed off their strengths, their individual strengths in both games. And uh, whichever team struck first in both games, that was the one that, that was able to take it home. So props to both teams. Both teams getting a win, going to one and one. And uh, I am excited to hear their thoughts. Yeah, I mean... I'm interested to see what they thought about these drafts and what they thought about the games in general. Whenever we'll see some uh, some people dip Action. into the casting, hopefully, uh, Fluge or Bluge. <laughs> Mr. Fluge or Bluge. <laughs> that is definitely, that's my first question as soon as they come in here. Is, we got uh, some yo plays in the chat. Oh, I mean, he is a yo play, right? Correct? Or am I? Yeah, big dumb. Not big dumb. Yes, he is. He is. No, no, he's a yo play. All right. Well, we'll wait for GMP as well. Uh, at least. Well, while well, we two. got some time, I mean, I want to know. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Yoga on the floor. Are you yeah. Here? What's yeah. up? Um, how, do, how, how does do you your, how your, your how does your how does your new juggler say his name? Even our jungler doesn't know how I, so, I always just called him. I've always just called him Fledger Blood. I mean, is he down with the Fluge or Bluge? <laughs> is I that... am. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. I got. I got to ask him. I need. I need to know. Is it? Is it Fluge or Bludge? Is it Fludge or Bluge? Is it Fluge or Bluge? We need to know. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I, I'm gonna go with the last one. All right, all right, okay. Hey, the captain said it, so it shall be. Um, um. I just want to say <laughs> that I'm full time casting for Yo Plays from this time forward. Um, if you want to co cast, that's fine. But any time that the jungler gets <laughs> Rip called out, then is on the <laughs> mic. <laughs> <sighs> all right. So uh, if we want to dive into the games, if you have any questions, go ahead, rip them off, Dusty. I mean, we get we can start with drafts. We can start with drafts for sure. Uh, let's go with winning team for game one, the uh, GMP. Walk me through both their picks and their bands. Sure thing. Hello. Um. So for us, um, I definitely wanted to secure the Soraka because um, I don't know. I just like her, and I know that area also. Has potential to play her, um, so I just wanted to get that right off the bat. Um, they didn't ban Yone, um, which Eminic is really good at that, and we also just needed some AD. So we wanted to pick that before they could ban it. And then the Nocturne, um, I don't know, is a good comfort pick and also uh, more engaged potential, so there's that. Um, the Ziggs, Mac is comfortable with that and really good, um, you know, getting turrets and stuff, which I think we saw a lot of that this game, so that's why I picked that. And then the Darius, uh, there was a lot of bands going towards Quinstone. Um, I had an inkling that perhaps the Tom Kenj may or may not come out. I also needed a little bit of a tank, so that's why we picked the Darius. Uh, in regards to the bands, um, I know MF is uh, Xeanomore's favorite, or top favorite uh, ADCs, and she's also just really good right now, so that's why we banned her. Um, Nasus can be really annoying if we just let him farm in the late game, so we wanted that out. And the Vex, uh, we knew that Yogurt was practicing Vex for quite some time, so we just didn't want to deal with that. Uh, really, and so that was our ban, ban penalty for a last minute... Uh, sub and then the syndra is also just um a really good champ that yogurt is on so we just wanted that out of the picture yeah i actually love the yo plays draft in game one uh or your team whatever team you're on gmp yes. that team i loved i <laughs> loved your guys' drafting game one um the ziggs is a really excellent pick not only in the meta but for snack who is 
comfortable on these mage bot lane picks. Um, we've seen him do Nico, who was, you know, was banned away from him. Uh, and then, obviously, worked really well on the Ziggs as well in game two, uh, in both games, honestly. And I really like the draft strategy you guys employed in both games. So, kudos to you on that. Thank um, you. Unfortunately, on the other side... Wait. You have Eminic. Yes. Yeah. They had Eminic. Yeah. <laughs> unfortunately... <laughs> Unfortunately, unfortunately for the other side you mean unfortunately for the other side uh you had Eminic. No. uh you know the draft adjustment in game two taking out the yone was well earned we'll say in game one sorry i get get my teams mixed up sometimes <laughs> um, oh good that being said uh you please walk us through your draft in uh the first game there uh, well, we saw the Soraka pick come out, so we asked Airy95 uh, what kind of support she'd be uh, comfortable on. We were gonna, we were planning on picking our bot lane and jungle first round, and she's like, "Let's uh, grab me Lux. I'd uh, be, be, I'd be able to poke out the Soraka." So we grabbed that, and we wanted the Ash for a little bit more utility, providing the vision, the stun, and the slow, uh, being like making it a lot easier to kite out the GNP's team. Uh, and we just grabbed our jungler, uh, one of the picks he was most comfortable on. Uh, it did slot into the pick comp uh, style uh, team we drafted pretty well, uh, conveniently. And we saw the, I saw the Yone, I needed a second to figure out what I wanted, and I said, hey, Ari is usually a pretty fine lane, uh, I'll take that. I did not play it very well. Uh, and the Tom Kent, we just needed, we just wanted an extra front line uh, to make sure the Yone, we we could keep the Yone and Nocturne at bay. Okay. And then uh, also to compound on that, what about your bands? Um, we knew Eminic Am played a, a lot of Fizz. Uh, we didn't want any of that fish. And right. we uh, really didn't want the Mordekaiser either. Um, being able to pull somebody into the Shadow Realms, not a good time. And Shen was just obnoxious the last time uh, we saw a Quinstone on it, uh, so decided to take that away from him too. And we weren't sure with the double AD if they were going to throw an AP bot laner, so we we knew Snack was comfortable on Nico and wanted to take that out of the equation. Uh, that also provides a really good team fight for them, just uh, make that a lot easier for us. And the Wukong was just another Bennett Quinn stone because we didn't really know what else to take away. Yeah, I mean, I liked your draft strategy as well. I really liked both team comps in game one. I thought you both had a clear identity, and I thought that uh, both teams really hit on what they wanted to hit on when it actually came to game time as well. Uh, I thought very one game one was both well played and fun to watch uh, unfortunately for the side of the yo plays <laughs> who did not have yone uh, they did not have yone so yeah. it made it very difficult uh, as Eminic really took over in game one and played a super super great game uh, you know uh, along with the rest of the team but you know Eminic really shined in game one in my opinion yeah, I mean, I think the I think the whole team played well. I think it was more of an, a little bit more of an execution, maybe base game, uh, with the team comps. But either way, both teams played well. Uh, with the GNP just edging out a little bit more uh, in the side of the first game. If you don't have any more questions for game one, Tom, oh, I do. You do. Uh, yeah. Sling uh, it. If the top laner. Darius could uh could come to the stage real quick and could you explain your first buys for us? Uh what? So I, I bought what? I bought Bramble Vest, uh Revealable Pot Specifically Pickboard? specifically Bramble there's a, first. There's a lot of healing uh, and then the TK has healing on his passive that also applies on his Q. And so I'm like, okay, well, I have to cut that. And he did the same thing, right? Like I know he does AP damage, but I have to cut all the sustain, otherwise he's gonna sustain me in and outside of fights. So I had to cut that down and I had to match him for doing it as well. And it also cuts his uh it also cuts his grasp of the undying healing. 
Uh, so all of that, I, I was like, okay, I mean, I have to eat it. I know it's a bad buy, but I needed to win the lane. And there's very few, there's like two fights that were really close anyway. And if you had a few more bits of health, you would have won. Okay. Uh, and I kind of, no flame, but I want to com compound on that. Uh, at one point, you, I think you were two items with the Triforce and something else. I can't remember. But then so you... At, at, at one point, there it was Merc Treads, the heel cut armor, and uh, Merc Treads, Bramble, and Sheen. No, no, I'm talking even further than that. He and then the Merc hard Treads, contact piece after. Triforce, and then he had another item. And then he had the components DMP. for... You had the components. Oh, I think he's talking about the fact you had. Uh, you had the components for uh, Dead Man's Plate. Yeah. But did not finish Bramble. Or uh -huh. did not finish uh, Thornmail, I guess. Why yep. I, I Why not finish, I, because, I would ask. Uh, I just rather would have the, the move speed versus, like, I just need the Bramble Vest to actually just fight TK. Mm -hmm. And I don't think 60% is going to make 40? that much of a difference. Yeah, versus mm -hmm. 40 that I already have. And I'm just I just need to be able to walk around the map way more and maneuver better. Uh in my runes I took maximum tenacity. Uh -huh. Um so I was like, okay, I just need move speed and so I could just I could constantly be moving around team fights exactly where I need to be. So I wanted the, the DMP for roaming yeah. and rotating. I definitely agree with that. DMP is a really good item on Darius, especially when you're trying to make plays with uh with your team like you were. So yeah, it just feels bad. Buy. I had to buy Bramble Vest into pretty much an AP team, but it's. I think I would have f lost fights had I not done it into TK. I don't really know the matchup that well because I always ban it, and that 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 business is ridiculous. Yeah. So the thing TK about almost <laughs> solo killed me like three times. I was like, okay. The thing about uh. The thing that we were confused about with the buy was because it only procs if he attacks you, so it doesn't actually cut down his Q healing unless he auto attacks you first. So right, I'm, right. Like, the only if time it would actually in, in the big in the big long trades, right? So if we're yeah, it would just... be in like a team, yeah, yeah. So not, like not it, it was it was in for the fight. it was for the all ins, right? Because if right. he hits me with a Q, then I'll just hit him with a Q, and we both net zero of the heals, right? Right. Like, yeah, yeah. Whoop de doo. And so, but yeah. like if for the all ins, I need every bit of health. And that's kind of what Darius goes for is the, the long, big trades, too. Or that's what he opts for, rather, with the passive, so. Uh, game two. Yes, game two. Go ahead. Would, uh, would like to talk about the picks and bans for game two as well? Yeah, we can From go with uh, the... winning team again. We can go with uh, your place. If you want to walk us through picks and bans, please. Uh, so ban phase first. Uh, Fizz obviously still an annoying champion. Uh, we saw the we saw Eminik's performance on the UNA game one, and we were like, no, 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 we we ain't having that again. So took that off the table. And Mordekaiser still just kind of an annoying champ. So uh, we took that away from Emin uh, Quinstone. Uh, then second round. Uh, we had mid laners left, and we wanted to take Emenik off of a couple of his other comfortable picks, uh, like Mausahar and Seraphine. Uh, both really obnoxious. The charm and the point and click uh, suppression from the Maus. Uh, just really obnoxious. And we decided uh, to first pick our jungler, uh, pick him something comfortable that would also fit with some sort of like split push comp we wanted, uh, like a 1 3 1 with decent team fighting. Uh, so Poppy, Poppy can do that. She has the ult to knock everybody away. Uh, we had already planned on put, sticking Nami in there because the wave uh, the ult gives quite a bit of disengage as well. And paired that with a Sivir, uh, made for a lot of really good poke in a pretty pretty strong lane. Um, I had we we didn't have a whole lot of time left uh, when we were drafting the LeBlanc. Uh, to be honest, it was kind of a last minute, like a last second panic pick. Um, we were debating uh, picking up that or the Irelia, and uh, just kind of, I just kind of accidentally locked the LeBlanc. And uh, this, the same was true with Kale. We were thinking uh, between Kale and I believe Tom Kench again, uh, but we were, sh we were struggling to figure out which one we actually wanted, and just kind of panic picked the Kale again. 
I, just, I think it worked out for you too. Uh, yes, we were kind of debating. Certainly worked out. We were kind of debating uh, both achievements and I whether you guys actually drafted for the LeBlanc into Rise matchup. But uh, if you say it was the last pick, I would assume not. But uh, if uh, Emmanuel doesn't mind commenting on how that lane goes as well, um, specifically, uh, my guy? Sorry. Uh, just how the LeBlanc versus Rise kind of matchup so, goes. Once I get items, I just wait player and don't bother. Like it's we trade relatively evenly early, but uh, LeBlanc gets to buy corrupting and. Uh, so I'll inevitably lose after two or three trades. Um, so my thought, the thought process behind the rise was we had all of these global ults going. So I was going to just eventually get to my items and then just go and be with the team. But uh, <laughs> we, we spent all of our, our jungle resources top lane and they spent all of theirs babysitting me and just like kept me in my damn place. <laughs> so... It didn't really work out. Ten four, and then um, uh, GMP. If you want to walk us through your your pick and bands, please. Sure thing. So the bands stayed the same for the same uh, reasons as I stated in the game one. Um, we or I anticipated that they would first pick Soraka, just <coughs> when uh, Harry likes. Or plays sim her similarly, uh, but they didn't. So we're like, sweet, we're gonna do the same thing that we did last time because it worked out and we're comfortable with that. So that's why we picked the Soraka Ziggs. Uh, and then previously, uh, we've played the not specifically in GMB, but we've experienced uh, the Shen and Soraka, and they didn't ban the Shen. So we we're like, all right, cool, let's let's pick that. It worked at some point. Um, Nocto worked as well. The LeBlanc and the Kale did throw us off a little bit. Um, so it just, and unfortunately, uh, Emenic received a lot of bans. Uh, so we were just going, what are you comfortable with dealing with the LeBlanc? <clears throat> and Rise is what was chosen. Ten four, And I don't think, I don't think we've seen... Maybe I haven't watched enough of the VODs, but uh, I don't think we've seen a whole lot of Nocturne for Hiri. Is he's not? Oh, he is in here. Uh, is that a comfort that. pick or Nocturne? Have you got? Have you played that before in the league uh, specifically? So Nocturne is actually the champion I learned jungle on. Mm -hmm. uh, well, like when I first started playing league, so I have a. I'm just kind of comfortable playing him in general. Um, wasn't the best showing the second game, but it's it's still just like it, it's a nice little pick that I go to whenever I think the team comps fit. But I I'm also very conscious of that like team comps don't always fit picking a nocturne even if you're good at the champion. So I I typically avoid it in team fight stuff. Ten four. I was I believe I mentioned it before. Like I don't I don't think we've seen you play it in the league, as far yeah. as I know at least. So. I think that was like probably my first time. Dom, do you have any questions for game two? I have a question for the Poppy, but the Poppy is not here. Ripper Skipper. Unfortunate. Um, I mean, we have questions in chat. I don't know if you're reading those, but. No, oh, go ahead. Absolutely. Oh, um, first off, Mr. Goobs, or as we all know, Sturbs. That's, what is it? I don't remember the numbers. 23, I think. Yeah. Uh, Peek Pikachu. He wants to know what made you pick the LeBlanc, Mr. Yogurt. Uh, so it was something we talk talked about, though the actual pick was a last second thing. Uh, we were looking for a 1 3 1 styled comp uh, with the bot lane and jungler hovering around mid uh, to defend that while, the to while top lane and uh, mid push the side lanes. Uh, and LeBlanc's mobility. Uh, really helps her get away from things, uh, so she's really safe. To sh she's really safe to just sit and shove. Um, though uh, the actual pick itself was sort of a last-second panic, uh, deciding between the Irelia and the LeBlanc. We've seen 
we've definitely seen a lot of LeBlanc in pro play, getting a lot of time, um, doing exactly what you did, uh, playing with the jungler, getting a lot of early game pressure off, some one shots, and then late game just being an absolute monster that you cannot stand around, especially if you're uh, not a tank. And you really put on a performance in game two and showed us uh, what LeBlanc can really do. I did get informed that the uh, Goobs is actually Isle of Lucy and not who I thought it was, but... Uh, Unfortunate. Moving on to the next question from chat. Sorry, Lucy. Um, Lux, as, or Lux is wondering how Quinstone felt about having his poppy jungle played against him. Oh, yeah, I, I played Poppy in Norms earlier today. Poppy's one of my favorite... Uh, it's, you love that champ. Play. She's <laughs> she's very fun. And I was like, oh, man, we should probably ban Poppy against this Poppy guy. We're like, but wait, you know, there's more annoying picks to get, of course. Um, yeah, Poppy's good. It's fun. I like it a lot. <laughs> uh, Mr... Uh... Fluger Bluch is not here for us <laughs> to ask him about whether um I kinda wanted to ask about the dark I to harvest. Ask about the Raptor path. Well that as well as I didn't I wanted to ask him about the Dark Harvest versus Electrocute as well. But uh Moving on. Uh I can actually question. answer the Dark Harvest. Oh, okay. It is actually suggested in the builds on uh when you look up the actual build for Poppy, so that seems to be the normal. Yeah, her uh, two highest win rate. Uh Keystones and jungle are electric or dark harvest followed by electrocute, though they are uh, very interchangeable. Yeah, I know I've seen uh, electrocute every time I've seen poppy jungle, but I've I don't know that I've seen the dark harvest a whole lot. So I was wondering why dark harvest. I mean, obviously they're pretty in interchangeable. Uh, most assassins in general will take either or, but I was wondering why that in this specific game, but. Since he's not here, can't really ask the question. So, uh, moving on to the last question from chat. Uh, a question for Miss Airy95. What was the game plan bot lane for game two? So, first game, I, I had this idea that I would, you know, poke out the Soraka. But then, so HXE had big brain moments that every time I went to throw a Q, I, I couldn't. I, I was silenced. So uh, props to her big brain. Uh, she canceled out my plans. Uh, so moving forward, well, yeah, again with first game, uh, we did place a lot of vision. I did notice that like we didn't take advantage of it or defend it. So I really wanted to um, capitalize on her vision more so. And then I noticed like first game as well, they were always five man stacking towards us. So Second game, I was like, okay, well, let's go for a big disengage. We got the Poppy jungle. We have, we can get Nobby alt for a disengage. Um, so doing that, and I, I played an aggressive Nami early, trying to get as many Ws out as possible um, to get my ward item, support item, finished up as quick as possible so that I can put out wards. But uh, we capitalized definitely better on our vision, defended it. Uh, kind of squelch their vision in their own jungle. So I think second game was mainly just focusing more so on vision and keeping them from five minutes and coming out on us. Say that again. Squelch. Yep, thank you. My child, my inner child is, is satiated. Hmm? <laughs> yeah. Mainly just vision and communication, bettering it. Alrighty. Well, uh, I was sad. I was sad with uh, Nami Sivir and not Nami Lucian. Yeah, that's I always was sad. A big sad. But uh, I don't think uh, I don't think that's a Xenomor champ. She's not able yeah. to defend herself about Lucian, but I don't believe that is a champ that she plays. But it would have been nice to see because that is a kind of world's meta. At the moment. It's very strong. <coughs> very strong. Cough, like. cough. <laughs> it's pretty good. But uh, do you have any more questions, Mr. g before we wrap up the stream? Uh, I do not. Uh, it was 
two super fun games to watch. Uh, nice. I'm sure they were fun Very games to play with. Good series, good series all around. Uh, does anybody from either team have anything they want to state before I close everything out? Thank you yes, so much, uh, Airy95, uh, Quinstone, <laughs> and any other subs we had tonight. I'm sorry, I don't remember all of the subs. I'm a little tired. Amanek. Yeah, yes. thank you. Thank you Amanek. to Airy, Amanek, and Quinstone for subbing uh, GG, Mr. Yogurt on floor. Jeez. And thank you to Rip Dusty and Achievements21 for casting and streaming. It's an honor to be a yogurt real play. Yeah, I feel glazed. Yes. <laughs> I feel glazed. <laughs> Do you feel like a non human primate, though? <laughs> yes. They, oh, they, they got the whole initiation. Don't worry. <laughs> They watched the training video where you just peel a banana, and eat it. <laughs> How do you know? I mean, I've been there. <laughs> I'm inside your head. <laughs> that being said, um, that was the last game of week six. Uh, next game for week seven will be on Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern time. That'll be NA Rams versus Coconut Crabs. Uh, this is the very last week before... The playoffs are to happen, so hopefully everyone that can will tune in and uh, check out the games. Uh, there is a game immediately after that even, so if you miss the first game of the night, uh, there will be another game on Monday night. So hope to see you guys there and uh, catch you next week. Bye-bye.